Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you how I drew this artwork of Bay from Hololive. So, again, I'm starting with the basic head shape that I've kind of really been doing a lot to get better at. For the most part, a three-quarters view is kind of becoming my bread and butter. Um, I should probably start experimenting with some side views or maybe some, um, some different angles. Because I've definitely started to get to the point where I've got this particular um, head shape down to the point where I don't have to draw any guides. So for the most part, that is definitely something I've got going for me and it's time maybe I should start branching out. But basically I had a reference for this one, a basic, oh goodness, I keep saying basically. Um, it was an artwork that for the most part I think was legit, but it might have been AI. But I noticed that it didn't have so many like glaring issues, so I thought, you know what, I'll just re reference it, it's fine, even if it's AI, because I'm drawing it myself, so maybe it's not so bad? I don't know. Definitely uh, kind of a gray area. <laughs> yeah, for the, for the most part, whenever you're looking for artworks on Pinterest, Pinterest is full of AI. So when you get one that looks like it could have been drawn, it, it makes you kind of double take and you just sit there and you go, I really hope this was hand drawn. But um, yeah, AI is getting so good, man. And it's it's kind of discouraging. But for the most part, you, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Um, AI is unfortunately here to stay. So in a way, it's it's similar to traditional animation. It's kind of been overtaken. So... It's why I have a lot of respect for anyone who decides that they're going to learn to draw when AI can just do everything for them now. So I, I have a ton of respect for... If you're just drawing stick figures, I have more respect for you than AI bros. Because at least you picked up a pencil and you gave it your best shot. But as you can see, I was definitely going for kind of this uh, kind of sexy, almost presenting sort of feel. Um... And that's something that I draw a lot. I definitely, my artwork is more on the risque side. And it's mainly just because I'm of the mindset that teasing is more powerful than showing everything. When things are left up to the imagination, it makes you think and look at the artwork more. I find that if you just show everything, it, it misses that like really, really intriguing part, I would say. Okay, right here we're, we're light carving using multiply layer, so I went for kind of this uh, side shadow with the hair kind of pressing down. And I think in the final product I, I didn't do it as much and maybe I should have, but it, it turned out okay. I'm a really big fan of like more intricate lighting and making sure everything looks nice. Then using uh, post processing to bring the colors back. I usually go very muted and then use add glow and tonal curves to kind of bring it all together. So this is definitely a more detailed sketch than I usually do. I'm, I always draw the sketch first, then color it because I want to plan out how I render. My issue is I can't actually see things in my head, so I have to plan them out this way. And I know that may seem weird for, uh, other people but for me it's definitely more normal also um i'm using like this water reflective brush that i found on a clip studios asset store and if anyone is interested in getting that i will have an option for you to message me or to leave a comment and i'll send a link for you that way you can use it yourself so we're getting there to the point where um i'm kind of planning everything out uh whenever i make everything grayscale that is to make sure that we don't have conflicting tones. That way everything is separated the way it should be. And there we go. There's the finished sketch. So now we're starting the line art. I really enjoy line art. I know a lot of people don't, but I really do. So it's definitely something that I need to make a new um, tutorial on for line art. Because my old one's kind of outdated. And has a really cringy sense of humor that I was a really big fan of at the time. And I remember my family found that video, and they were none too thrilled. Um, so I had to deal with uh, my family being like, that was inappropriate, you shouldn't have done that. And I was like, I'm sorry, Mom. <laughs> my my mother, God bless her, she, um, 
she is kind of a passive fan of my art. She likes my colors, but she hates the subject matter. And that's totally fine because, you know, Christian, Southern mom, and risque anime girls don't mix together. So whenever she tells me she likes the colors, that's her doing her absolute best to support me. <laughs> I actually wasn't a super big fan of how I did the eyes for this artwork. It's still similar to how I've been doing them recently, but I'm trying to find a way to kind of perfect them a bit more because they're, they're definitely getting better, but they're not quite 100% how I want it, if that makes sense. But for the most part, they look pretty good. I'm a really big fan of this Hall Alive member. Um, I go through phases with uh, VTubers, meaning I, I watch one for a long period of time, then I take a break and I watch a different one. And it kind of affects how I um, draw them. Say, for example, for a while it was Crone, and then, then it was Crony, then it was Mume, then it was Fauna, then it was Gura. You know, it just, it all swaps around because... I apparently can't stick to one. <laughs> um, Mume was the one I really liked for the longest time. Same with uh, Mori Calliope. And I just realized I'm going to have a pain in the butt trying to spell everything here. So we'll have to figure that out when time comes. Also, I'm super happy with how I've been drawing hair lately. I, I feel like I'm finally starting to get it. Um, I really enjoy making my hair super messy whenever I draw it, so it's one of those uh, things that I find the more wild the hair, the more fun it is to draw. Um, the rendering is super simple on my um, on my anime hair, but for the most part, uh, the line art is kind of complex. So you can see there's a lot of curves and movement to the hair, which is not easy to draw from the for uh for me but it's it's slowly starting to get a lot easier and that's another thing that i'm currently working on a tutorial for is how to draw hair the same way i do now if you'll notice i'm zoomed way way out every now and then and that's because i want to look at everything as a whole i have a bad habit of zooming out when i should be zooming in to check things if that makes sense so in the near future i need to kind of correct that bad habit i've got so now we're adding in the base colors. And for the most part, base colors are pretty self-explanatory. You'll notice with all my uh, artworks that I'm using the same tones and colors, and that's because they're the most uh, easy or familiar ones for me. And they, they bring me the level of saturation that I personally enjoy making. This uh this artwork turned out okay for the most part I'm not so sure about what is it like the 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 anatomy might be a little bit rough um you'll see here I'm using the selection pen to kind of create a um a spherical motion with the breasts here that way I can um go over it again with the multiply layer to kind of and make it a bit more um three dimensional so to speak. And I might have overdone it, so that's my mistake, but it, it turned out okay. I have a big issue with, like, rendering super fast and then just being like, I did it! <laughs> and um, for the most part, I may need to start learning how to slow down. I, I don't mind the speed that I'm going at, but it might be good to kind of slow down and really assess everything before I um, finish it. There's the multiply layer. And this kind of brings the artwork to a higher level. Um, I'm not quite sure what words to use here, so that's on me. Yeah, I also think I, I over-rendered the face and that was a mistake I made. So artists go through cycles, right? We start with uh, little bits of detail, then we go into over-detail, then we reduce the amount of detail and we kind of play around to find a balance. But over-detailed um, tends to be a problem that every artist will go through at least at one point in their career. Then they realize that it's time to simplify. So we've got the add glow to kind of make it pop a bit more, some blues and some reds. Now we add a multiply layer to the hair to kind of plan everything out. And for the most part, I did all right with the hair, but I probably should have uh, 
corrected it a bit more and added some more care. So now we're starting to get everything. Everything's kind of popping the way it's supposed to. And we are getting close to the end. I'm adding little uh, details where I add some more uh, shadows to everything to kind of get the contrast correct. And for the most part, we are pretty much done with the character. I should not have drawn the eyes that zoomed out. That was a completely bad idea. So don't do that. Don't do what I just did there. That's a terrible idea. It leads to uh, not so great artworks and don't do what I did. So now we're redrawing the background to kind of get it kind of nice and the way we want it. Adding the clouds and the sky. I kind of flip flop between drawing clouds and using a cloud brush. For the most part, I think you should probably use, um, um, it should be hand drawn. Not the cloud brushes are okay, but they, they don't always get everything right. So now we're adding all the post processing and there we go. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell helps out a whole lot. I'll see you next time. Bye.